Hey, it's I'm new here. I'm Pastor Goodman. Pastor Richard, how's it going? Good to see you, Harrison. You too. So we're talking about the third article of the creed, the Apostles' Creed. Uh, this sort of feels like that that junk drawer you have in your kitchen with like roll of tape, a dead battery, and a flashlight don't work no more. Um, and it's it's just sort of all the leftover stuff. But in reality, uh, in the same way that, that when we talk about the first article of the creed, we're talking about sort of the, the chief way we see the Father in action, the Son there in the the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. You see sort of the Holy Spirit at work in, in this article, and, and it, it means that this is actually a really important one, right? Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad I'm glad you 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 shared that uh, the junk box, if you will, right? But no, but it, it really isn't a junk box. But yeah, we have all these things in there that to cover. I mean, we have mm-hmm. a lot of things, but I think the key word to 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 understand in all that is the word sanctify. Mm-hmm. And so perhaps we should you know maybe define the word sanctify. And in the easiest sense, the word sanctify is to make holy. You know, the word of God sanctifies. And so uh, real quickly, like if we go to do a burial of a loved one, you know, we, we go out, we sanctify the grave through prayer and the word of God. And so it's to make holy. And so the, maybe the question that we, we, we should ponder is, how does holiness come about? Right. And very simply, the Lord God, he sanctifies us. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us by placing us in the Ark of the Holy Church. He sanctifies us by the forgiveness of sins. He sanctifies us by raising us from the dead. He sanctifies us by giving us eternal life. Sanctification and that holiness is something that is God given to us. I like it. So the whole third article of the creed is God making you holy in all the places it happens, all the ways it looks like. And, and that's really important too, because when I sort of, ima- I, I can understand a concept of holiness, this, this idea of being clean before the Lord. And then I look at myself and well, I don't, I don't feel too holy. How do I, how do I be holy every day? How do I know that I am holy enough? How, how come I sin so much pastor? Yeah. You know, and, and that's the key though, is when we hear that we're sanctified and made holy, that, that again, on the one hand, that is not a license to, to sin, obviously. I I mean, Jesus, uh, I mean, that would make Jesus an author of sin and, Mm -hmm. and that's not the case. And that the other aspect too, to hear that we're holy saints, man, it causes us a, a sense of uneasiness, you know? And, and, and if you were to say, you know, Pastor Richard, you're a saint. I'm like, oh, oh, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but yet through baptism and through the word of God and the Holy Supper being placed in the Christian church, God declares you and me saints. So then if I'm a saint and that I've been bestowed this wonderful gift of being declared a saint, being declared holy, well, what does a good tree do? It doesn't produce bad fruit. It produces good fruit. So then when I see good fruit in my life, I could say, God be praised. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for preparing these good works for me to walk in in advance. God be praised for these good fruits that are coming forth. But then that brings up the point that you have is, well, what happens when we see bad fruit? You know, what, what happens? Well, it's very simple. We repent. Yeah, you prune it. Um, and you bring that to Jesus too. I, I think maybe even one of the ways to talk about this might be actually in the explanation of, of the third article. So Luther starts by saying, this means I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. And then you can talk about holiness here uh, because by your own reason and strength, you can't believe in this. I believe that I cannot believe. This is this is bigger than me. I cannot fathom God, let alone a merciful one in a world like this. And so without the Holy Spirit, no one can believe, but you believe now. And so something has happened. God has worked something. And you can measure it simply because God gave it. And this will also be a case for your good works. Your your faith will not be a perfect thing that you would want to measure, but but rather is God a perfect God who gives good gifts? Because I have doubts, I have fears, I have concerns, um, I have worries that that all sort of chip away at this. I have sins in my actions and my hands that that are in my heart that that are, are Lord have mercy on me, a sinner. Uh, but in all of this, then it doesn't just happen once, but over and over again, the Holy Spirit is at work in your life uh, to to bring you to the resurrection where you will at last be fully holy. But it happens every single day. Yeah, yeah, and I love I love what you said earlier about being pruned. I love that uh, in the Gospel of John where Jesus talks about, I'm the vine, you are the branches, and apart from me, you can do nothing, which is exactly what you just stated in the catechism there. And then we think about this where the, the branch uh, bears this good fruit that is produced by the vine. We say, God be praised. And when it doesn't happen, what happens? Snip, snip, we're, we're, we're pruned, and that's, that's painful. That happens through repentance and mortification of the sinful nature. Um, and then battling and warring against this old Adam, the sinful nature itself, but then always returning back to where, back to our baptisms, back to the source of our strength, which is Jesus Christ and his good gifts for us. And so I just love the idea that, uh, 
man, the Holy Spirit's always drawing us back to the good gifts. And then when you come into the church on Sundays, at least here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church, when we do the absolution, I put my hand right on that baptismal font yeah. and I pronounce the forgiveness of sins. And I just get this picture. It's like, man, the Lord God is tucking all these saints, tucking them back into their baptisms where they belong in holiness in him so that they might what? receive that blessed word and sacrament in the service, and then to be blessed with that holy benediction to go throughout their lives. I tell you what, he brings them back, tucks them into the forgiveness of sins, and then strengthens their faith through the word and sacraments so that they may go out in their vocations again and again and again. And so that, holy, go, go ahead. Go ahead. And so in holiness, so I would say holiness is a reality that we abide in. But again, we're so prone to wander. We're so prone to leave the God that loves us. And so it's like that good shepherd with his crook dragging us back to the flock, yeah. tending to our wounds, uh, healing our wounds, feeding us, sustaining us um, as his sheep. And the way that you talked about it, it's it's important that you said that this happens through the word and the sacraments. This is a thing that that you can see. And that's important because I think most of the people, when they go looking for Jesus today, they come up awful empty handed. Because if I go to your church, if you go to, to, to my church, you see a, a pastor standing investments. You don't see Jesus. If, if you, you pray, the sky doesn't speak back to you with the heavenly voice of the Father. Uh, but but so it, it's not that so we're, we're sort of imagining a God who's stuck in heaven, but rather we have a God who has promised to work in ways that we can actually comprehend. Uh, because every time the sky spoke in, uh, in the scriptures, people kind of freaked out a little bit. Uh, Jesus actually preached a lot of uh, to people who did not hear and believe. Uh, it's not as, as perfect a solution as you think it was if the sky would talk at you and, and Jesus would show up in a, in a white bathrobe, but rather you have the Holy Spirit working through means, through through people and through stuff in ways that you can actually comprehend, lay hold of and receive. The Holy Spirit is present in baptism. The Holy Spirit is present in the preached word. The Holy Spirit is present in, in the Lord's Supper to, to bring you to Jesus and to bring Jesus to you so that you're not sort of trying to measure, do I have enough Jesus by my heart, by my my hands or, or, or by my head, do I understand enough? But, but rather I can be certain that, that I am abiding in Jesus because I'm in the places where he promised to work. Oh man. I just, gosh, what do I even say to that Harrison? That's, that was, that's epic. I mean, it absolutely is a hundred percent epic. It's his gifts for us. And so we realize our holiness by our baptisms. We realize our holiness that we've been given by his word is spoken to us. And then we don't do good works to you know, somehow obtain this forgiveness. We do good works because we already have it, who we are. And so as his beloved saints, we are good trees in Jesus. And so we produce good fruit. And again, when we don't, we repent and we return back to what? The water, the sun, you know, the soil, which is going to be all his good, what? His good works of his word and sacrament for us, returning always to Jesus. So we abide in him and walk in our sainthood, in this sanctification, in this holiness that he's given us. Brilliant. We'll do prayer next time. Absolutely. Sounds good.